you know, you know when judges, um, you know, run off to their chambers, there's been a bit of a, a feeling for a while that that somehow denotes that you're you're on victory. We we discovered actually that that when a judge um, when a judge first enters a chamber, he really is representing himself, and really all the laws of the society we think are you know by the by the parliament, but really they're all bylaws of the bar society. So in that first instance, um, the when you establish your standing. Um, Unless the judge provides remedy, he, he is in dishonour, yeah? Yep. So if, if a judge doesn't want to provide remedy, what he can do is he can leave the, the, the court, which is what we see when they run out, but when he returns, he doesn't return to a, a form of court based on the rules of the Bar Society. He returns now changing the form of the court without us seeing anything physically change. Uh, into full admiralty court. Ah. Now, unless you then re-establish your standing again, um, then it, it's as if you are you you no longer have any standing because it's a brand new court. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Um, now that the the the, the it's also that what you ask for has to change as well because if you ask for the wrong thing, they won't give it to you. So under the bar society, in the first form, it's remedy. But under the second form, because it's gone to pure admiralty, you really have only two choices. If you don't establish standing, they will treat you as salvage uh, under the laws of Oleron, which is the base laws, and they're all fictional, but under the claim laws that the Roman cult and the Venetians use for, uh, for commerce. So that salvage, you're dead, right? Um, you're just a four-post of bed. If you re-establish your standing, which you must do uh, when the judge returns, what you ask for is cure and maintenance, not remedy. Because cure and maintenance is the form of, of, of remedy after the law. Yeah? yeah, I've never heard that one before. Well, under Admiralty Law, the laws of Oleron is the base for it all. So um, it's always good to get back to the source document. And under that, what it says is, you know, Salvage is salvage, okay? There is no life salvage in maritime law. So if you're dead, it's, you're, you're going to be salvaged and basically put into some holding um, uh, uh, building, right? That's why they'll put you in prison. You're just a bit of cargo going to a warehouse. Yeah. But if you establish yourself as living, then um, under the laws of Oleron, that means you're a sailor, okay, on, on the ship of state. And they must provide you cure. Max, it's actually not just cure, but maximum cure and maintenance until your health is restored. So it, it actually is a stronger remedy than if the judge had never run out and returned. But what the judge is trying to do is, is basically re-establish uh, superior jurisdiction by tricking the defendant into not re-establishing their standing. Yes? And, and sadly, I feel that this um, happens I think almost 90% of the time that that you know a man or woman gets get learns the the, the the art of establishing the standing judges get wind of it they're more often than not running from the chamber the movement are told truth movement are told that that is a good sign uh, so it's actually being misinterpreted right. but when they come back uh, what they're doing is they've re-established their honor it's a totally different court no, yeah. it's now purely up to court and unless you re-establish standing and ask for the correct um, uh, um, remedy for amnesty law, they will not give it to you. Yeah? Interesting. And they can and do I... it once more, Vic. Yep. If they're really, if you're in a federal court, they can leave again for the third and final time. And if they leave again and they return, they come back as a high priest of the uh, religion of Baal and under the protection of the ecclesiastical laws of canon law where they are treated as an ordinary. So they're basically sitting there as a representative of the curia. It's as if you're in front of the Pope. Yeah? Right. right. Now this is rarely done because a mistake at this level is a very serious error on their part and they could if they do an error of dishonour at this third level, they, they lose 
they, they lose being a judge forever. Yeah? Is that right? But it's 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 the last it's the last chance for them to basically get one over you. And it's only at that point that the claim of sovereignty of a living flesh being between oneself and God can be used. At no other point does it have any remedy. So really what's happened with sovereignty is I believe sovereignty is a, because of that is a genuine remedy, but only in the very, very rarest occurrences. Right. But other than that, it's turned out to be a terrible, terrible distraction for people. Yeah, I, w I would agree with you. And uh, people believe that when a judge runs out of the courtroom, and they think it's funny. And I think that is uh, that is part of the misinformation that has been presented, sadly, because. Um, um, you know, the people think of it in terms of uh, battle. Really, what they're watching is a judge leaving to re-establish their honour because they don't wish to offer remedy, returning into a brand new court. Yeah. Yep. Yep. As I say, this is the first I've heard of this in these, you know, these second and third appearances coming back to the court. Well, understanding what they're doing exactly, and in fact, I'll tell you where we found validation for this. The word bar in, in bar association has been deliberately, uh, firstly, it comes from 1823, so it's relatively recent, but it, its history has been clouded from a, a name that is supposed to have been a, a, a wash-up of the temple bar and, and tradition. It actually turns out to be one of the most powerful magic words um, available to these magicians, the curse. I mean, when they sentence you, they're issuing a curse. They're issuing a spell. Yeah. What, what we've failed to realize is that we're dealing with people who, for a living, uh, uh, perform magic. And we've forgotten that, that, that everything about them is about staying in honour with their magic. If they lose their power of magic, they can't issue orders. That's why if they're in dishonour, a judge has to step down because their orders have no magical power right. under their system. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's actually the reason. And the proof is in the name of these societies. The word bar is a magic word in that what you see is one word, but really what you should be seeing is bar bar three times. That's what the, the, the word actually means. Bar 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 bar. That's what bar is. And bar bar means father in Hebrew and it means priest in Hebrew. That's interesting. And it particularly and bar, bar, particularly means a Baal priest. A Baal priest. That's what it means. A yeah. Baal priest. Now, a bale or bal? Uh, well, bal. Ba bal is two words. Uh, ba, uh, which is Lord, and then L. And the L is is uh, is abbreviated. So bal with the apostrophe means Lord God. Yeah? Right. So um, ba, just on its own, means Lord. So what you have uh, is the word ba also means uh, son of, as you've probably seen in Hebrew, like Simon Bar Jonah, Simon, son yep. of Jonah, yeah? But it also yep. means practitioner of. So what you have is Bar Bar, practitioner of Bar. Bar Bar, practitioner of, abbreviated B A R, B Baal, A, um, by R Romanum. So practitioner of um, Baal through Rome, yeah? Bar, yeah. another word for canon, rule, standard, okay? Practitioner of bar, practitioner of canon law, yeah? Yes. They yeah, tell you. Yeah, one, one, one other use of uh, bar, bar, is the beginning of barbarians, which comes from the Greek and it means that they, it's an uh, the people uh, spoke, a, uh, you know, in the manner that they spoke, it was un not understandable, just like legalese. So they, that's where the word barbarian came from. And, of course, it's part of bar where they speak legalese, where only they can understand the words and we can't. 
Yes. Yeah. Back. So um, what we see in the word itself is, is a supremely powerful magic word um, that they are using to present themselves. And so they're really uh, telling people that they are religious. The canon law tells that all courts are considered temples. That, that that's what the canon law is doing, is, is giving validation to the fact that the courts are called oratories and, and it's in canon law and priests, uh, not, uh, judges are priests called ordinaries. Uh, but what, the, what this is doing is validating what we're witnessing that um, the the judge leaving and returning um, is really changing uh, the form of the court to to more senior, more powerful um, uh, law. Um, it's showing that a judge is holding um, levels of power. It's showing that a judge is absolutely dripping in um, being a, a priest, a, a Baal priest, and that the authority of the judge and the ability to sentence is purely an ecclesiastical and sacramental power. It has nothing to do with uh, adjudication or agreement. Um, their ability to judge and sentence is purely by remaining in honour of their ecclesiastical powers. So <clears throat> when you um, present an ecclesiastical notice of dishonour, uh, that uh, uh, gives notice of dishonour by their rules, a judge loses their power. And it turns out that all this argument about liens and things that people have had for years, that, you know, if you get a lien on a judge, the judge has to leave, the lien means nothing. The lien is, 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 is irrelevant. What it, what's happening is when someone perfects that notice of protest and dishonour uh, to the point that it has some ecclesiastical power, the judge is screwed. Now, the problem that remains is, is this, and we are getting, we're, we're draining the swamp to the point that in Pennsylvania now, there's no more pr playing around. That They are holding firm to their claim of canon law, jurisdiction, but there's no more, there's no more misdirection or, 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 or fluff. We're down to the, you know, we, we see the white of their eyes, they see us, we know who they are, they, they don't quite know who we are. The canon law that we're doing now is the last, last thing. Once canon law is established for what it is, they cannot claim superior jurisdiction anymore. Right. But um, it, it, really, they once you can remove then their rightfully remove their ecclesiastical power, their people are dead in the water. They they can't do their job. Right. So you've disempowered them. Yeah. Well, that's. Their power, it turns out, is magic. Their power is if I can't curse you, then I can't do my job. And that's what a judge is supposed to do, is to issue judgments, and their judgments are curses. The curse establishes a debt. The debt is the monetization. That's what they do. Have you ever heard the, the, the have you ever heard of the, uh, the story in the New Testament about Jesus um, uh, removing a hundred demons and then putting them into pigs and they jump off a cliff? Uh, that's not in my Bible. Okay, well, it's a, it's a. There's a, there's a story that, and it might only be in the the Vulgate, um, the Roman cults Vulgate, but it, it's the story of Jesus uh, um, uh, banishing a hundred demons from a from a, a, a fellow and then putting them into the pigs, and the pigs jump off the cliff. But the the, the point of the story is it demonstrates um, the uh, rebound of magic in terms of curses. So what it's implying is that, that Jesus cursed the, the demons, the de demons then left the body, and then uh, uh, Jesus got the, the, the demons into the pigs so that effectively the rebound wouldn't occur. There's actually a, a quote, um, judge not lest ye be, ye be judged, yes? Yep, yep. That should actually be curse not lest ye be cursed. Okay. The Egyptians knew... And, and these people are magicians. Remember, they're sorcerers. They're into magic. The Egyptians knew that the most powerful spell is a curse spell. But the downside of a curse spell is when it matures, it returns with interest. Mm 